exciting player in women's basketball. And it's not just because of the logo three. Certainly that's what we like to see. Those are the highlights night in and night out. But she scores at all three levels. She makes her teammates better. She assists on 46% of her teammates made shots. The Buckeyes certainly have a challenge in defending and containing Caitlin Clark. Not forget the big shot Bob right there. Yeah, that wasn't bad, right? When they came from behind or, or beat Indiana on that buzzer beater. How about nine triple doubles in the career for Caitlin? That's a big 10 record. Three of them this year, 27 games with at least 20 points this season alone. That leads the nation. And oh yes, when she played Ohio State, she had a triple double against them as well. And now they get to play Ohio State. A very improbable final, especially when they were down by 24 against Indiana, and they really turned up the defense in the second half. Yeah, it's when Ohio State is at their best, when they can set their full court pressure, they can turn opponents over, they can create offense from their defense. They were able to do that in the second half against Indiana it's a lot easier when you make shots you can get that defense set Ohio State so good one of the best in the country it points off a turnover they were getting after it they were in passing lanes and JC Sheldon I think she is the key she is the glue she is the X factor coming back to play in the Big Ten tournament not only does she set the tone on D but she's another primary ball handler and threat from the perimeter and indeed was an historic comeback largest comeback in the history of this tournament down 24 and it was to Indiana, the top seed, number two team in the country, and the only team in D1 to overcome a 20-point deficit at halftime to come back and win. For more on Ohio State, let's go over. Christy Winter Scott has more on their Big Ten Freshman of the Year. The Big Ten Freshman of the Year is pretty phenomenal. Cody McMahon, she has been outstanding during this tournament, but also all season long. She has 12 games where she scored more than 20 points this season. She is so dynamic with the power game that she presents on the floor. But most importantly, head coach Kevin McGuff said she exudes joy when she plays and she practices so hard. And the way he said that, she stays consistent with her work ethic, and that is only going to make her a better player but this postseason she has certainly proven herself on the big stage and the fruits of her labor totally evident yeah Christy she had a double double yesterday in that win against Indiana 12 points and 14 rebounds the freshman from Centerville Ohio a big matchup Taylor theory gonna jump up against Monica Sinano Sinano and Caitlin Clark with that big one-two punch from the perimeter and in the post, and we are underway in the Big Ten Championship. Automatic bid on the line. Both these teams will be in the NCAA Tournament. Looking to host Iowa coming in 25 and six on the season. And take a look at their starting five. Already talked about Caitlin Clark. Kate Martin, sort of the the, the Swiss Army knife, if you will. McKenna Warnock did not play in the first game against Ohio State, as you mentioned, but how was Gabby Marshall yesterday? Well, and Gabby Marshall has been so impressive. Struggled early in the season, but has caught fire as of late. She did 58% from the three in the last nine. Tied a career high with seven threes yesterday off the turnover. Monica Sinano able to come up with the rebound for the Hawks, who lead the nation in scoring and field goal percentage and assists, but their offense a little slow to get started. Well, those long passes are not going to be there against Ohio State. They are too good at getting in the passing lanes. Really relying on their defense. Ohio State coming in as the fourth seed in this tournament. Kevin McGuff in his 10th year in charge of Ohio State, 21st year overall as a head coach. And they go off to a 19-0 start. Best start. And who beat them? The Hawks got That's him. It. The Hawks. Hawks broke that streak. Yep, they were 19-0 until they played Iowa. And then Iowa beat them in Columbus. Again, that was back in January, in which Caitlin Clark had a triple-double. Ricky Harris takes a little bit of contact. Rebound taken down by Sinano. Clark and Sinano combined for 50 in that ball game. So Iowa had turned the ball over in its first three possessions. Gabby Marshall is white hot right now. She sure is. And Lisa Bluter talking about Gabby Marshall all throughout the year. And hey, we needed to get her going. And boy, has she ever gotten going. Speaking of getting going, Taylor Mike so. 
could be a fun battle between Mike Sell and Marshall. Mike Sell averaging over three threes per game. That is first in the Big Ten. It rims out for Caitlin Clark. Clark had 22 against Maryland yesterday, but was rather quiet in the second half. Most of her points coming from the line, and that's when the rest of her teammates really galvanized and won that game. Yeah, it really was, and this is an Iowa Hawkeye team that every defense is going to focus on Clark and Sinano. So when multiple players can knock down shots from the perimeter, as they're capable of doing, they are so tough to stop. Well, Mike, so that's a long two for her. Ohio State, her third school. Almost another turnover. Mike Sell played a couple years at Maryland, one year at Oregon, and another first-team Big Ten selection. Lisa Bluter in her 23rd season at Iowa. Lisa Bluter talked to us about ball security, valuing the basketball, handling the press. Well, the press isn't getting him. It's in the quarter court. Making sure you give yourself a chance to get a shot off, and there's another turnover. Kate Martin called for the offensive foul. That's four turnovers already for Iowa. Well, fortunately for the Hawkeyes, Ohio State's not converted on those turnovers, but Ricky Harris, one of the best at getting good position, taking the contact. I will mention all Big Ten this year, the Redshirt Junior from Indianapolis. And what a job she's done, stepping up in the starting point guard role. J.C. Sheldon went out for injury. And then Walker back rims it. Sonato comes up with another rebound. And here's Caitlin Clark. All eyes on her whenever she has the basketball. You see Ohio State fronting Monica Sonano inside, trying to not allow her to get a touch. And Walker drawing that match up. Clark to Warnock, who turned around and found herself unguarded. Instead of taking the jump shot, she decided to drive. Warnock did miss the game when they played during the regular season. Harris, nothing doing. Chased down by Warnock. Both teams had double buys, so they didn't play until Friday, but still their third game in as many days. Clark backs up and hits nothing but net. Third game in as many days, and Ohio State had to expend a lot of energy in their second half comeback against Indiana. They played 94 feet that entire second half, so how much will they have in the tank? fans outnumbering Ohio State large by large margin and Taylor Theory with the shot and Pam that used to be the game plan right to make Taylor Theory shoot the basketball because she was not a very good three-point shooter only one of five a year ago but she's now shooting at 38 percent you have to respect it as Kaylin Clark goes to work this time Clark shows she can take you off the bounce and Theory hitting that shot the first person other than Mike Sell to hit a shot for the Buckeyes. Walker, good look, but it rimmed out. Ohio State getting all jump shots, all perimeter contested jump shots. Clark looking for Sonano. And sometimes she makes a pass and you're thinking there's no way that's gonna connect and it almost always seems to. She just has such great instincts. Her timing is perfect. She understands how to get the ball to her teammates. She knows where she's going to go with it every possession. She and Sonano have just an incredible bond on the court. Sonano has great hands. Clark bit on the fake from Theory. And a jump ball as Warnock got her hands in there. First time out, Iowa with a three-point lead. Caitlin Clark's got five early points. You cannot give her that much space on the step back. But she's proven that she can get to the rim, too, moving without the basketball, finishing an easy two. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. You take care of your team, they take care of business. Ohio State and I were both celebrating yesterday with their semifinal victories. They get to put the sticker up on the bracket. And Caitlin Clark just had another, uh, another line to her resume. Twenty-five hundred career points now 
for Caitlin Clark. She's second in career scoring in Iowa already. I mean, that's incredible. She's in her third and she's year. she's in her third year. Megan Gustafson? Yes, Megan Gustafson, who was one of the great scorers in Iowa women's okay. basketball history. Caitlin Clark scores or assists on 53% of Iowa's offensive production, second in the country, only to McKenna Hofschild out of Colorado State. I mean, that's just a phenomenal percentage of production that she brings to the table for the Hawkeyes. Absolutely, a totally different team, and she's on the floor. Sinano with her second basket, Iowa's on an eight nothing run. Well, we talk so much about her ability to score because she is an outstanding scorer, almost 27 a game. But she is a great passer. I mean, she, there are a lot of, of, of really good scores that we've seen in the, throughout the country in women's basketball, but not very many who do both at an elite level. And she is one of them. Caitlin Clark is averaging over eight assists per game. To go along with 27 points, seven and a half rebounds. And she does also a great job of getting to the free throw line. That's where she's improved the most, in how she finishes off a two feet at the rim. Early in her career, she was trying to take the contact, shoot it off of one foot, fall out of bounds, get the foul, not finish the end one. She is a much better finisher around the rim. She told us earlier in the season she put on eight pounds of muscle, and you certainly can tell. Taylor Fury with her first personal foul. And Kitten Clark getting to the free throw line almost eight times per game. I mean, Angel Reese and Diamond Miller get there more often than she does. And that's a sign of great scores. You find different ways to put the ball in the bucket. When you're a tough matchup like Caitlin Clark is, you find ways to get to the foul line. And now she's getting in once. And she's an excellent free throw shooter as well. Can rebound the ball. She's got good speed, too. Gets down there quickly, a falter in the game. Clark tried to get it into Sinano. It was kicked. Frustrating Caitlin a little bit, but they hang on to it with 21 seconds left to shoot. Nikolashikova in the game for Ohio State had been starting, now coming off the bench for Coach McGuff. Get some size. Clark yelling to the crowd. She knows how to play to the people. You think? A little bit. <laughs> she feeds off of these Hawkeye fans, and you can tell it. Caitlin Clark, you can't give her that much space, Taylor Theory. Caitlin Clark already has 11 points, a couple of threes has shown her emotions in this game. But she is an emotional player. Her team up 20 to seven. It is a 14 nothing run. Harris, nope, good rebound by Theory. Second chance, nothing doing. Buckeyes are getting a lot of opportunities around the rim that they're not able to convert on. Also did not take advantage of those four early turnovers by, by Iowa, didn't score on any of them. And now J.C. Sheldon, number four into the game, has been in the last couple of minutes. And such an important component, they really missed her during the season. Yeah, they did, and, and not just because J.C. Sheldon can score the basketball, but she sets the tone on D. You'll see them full court press. Most of the time when she's out there, she changes the pace of the game. And right there, a steal. And look, you can't press if you don't score the basketball. So dead ball, perfect opportunity for the Buckeyes. Give it right back. Clark looking, had that, had that look in her eye, like she was gonna put up another shot. That's a great pass by a falter into Sinano. Well, that's gonna be the matchup to take advantage of. And Mikola Shakova is guarding Monica Sinano. She's not gonna to work to get in front. She's gonna to try to play behind and use her length and size. Ohio State desperate for a point to travel. Monica Sinano just next in line of a lot of great post players in Iowa women's basketball history. Does a great job of getting positions in the falter, delivers that pass right on the money. 
since her freshman year when she barely played, she played five minutes a game behind the great Megan Gustafson. Sinano has taken her game to another level, led the nation in field goal percentage for a couple of years. And a lot of the credit goes to associate head coach Jan Jensen, who's just a terrific post coach. Yes, she is, and really worked and retooled Monica Sinano's shot. She has become one of the most efficient players in the country year after year. Not a lot of wasted movement, doesn't put the ball on the floor, knows what she's going to do with it when she catches. Molly Davis, number one in for Iowa. Transfer from Central Michigan. Theory finally stops what had been a 16 nothing run for Iowa. Sonano, Gabby Marshall gets bottled up, got rid of it before she took steps. Also took some contact from Mike Sell, enough that it's a foul. I like how aggressive Iowa is being, putting the ball on the floor and going to the rim. They are putting pressure on this Ohio State defense to defend them one on one in the half court. Uh, Sonano is going to get a rest. Hannah Stolke, the Big Ten Six Player of the Year, freshman from Cedar Rapids, which is 20 minutes or so north of Iowa City, comes in. Walter at the free throw line, sophomore from Chicago. Seen her minutes go up as the year has gone on. We go inside a minute in the first quarter. Iowa is hitting a ridiculous 82% from the floor. And we're not talking about layups now. Three of four from three for Iowa. Harris decides to drive on Clark, who has become a better defensive player this year. Shot clock is dying. And nope, shot clock off now for the Hawks. If I'm Taylor Theory, I'm forcing Caitlin Clark back into the help right here. to close out about as good a first quarter as you could want. Iowa shot 83% in that quarter. Caitlin's got 11. You know she can score it. You can't back off. She lulls you to sleep with that dribble, knocks down the three, and one of the best in the country at finding her teammates. Caitlin Clark's doing damage early for the Hawkeyes. You know she can shoot that three. You got to close the gap. She's two for three from the three-point line. Moving without the ball, scoring at the rim, delivering dimes on the money. She's got three of those as well. Added the ability to get the hoop and harm. You know when she sets you up right there. She look away, finds Hannah Stokey going to the rim. I mean, she is just unstoppable you just have to try to make her as uncomfortable as possible and yeah, whenever you talk to coaches about how they'll defend they, they talk about that make it hard on her but she obviously that's the game plan and hardly anybody's ever done that. well look and the way that you make it hard on her and she's seen it all year long is physicality it's closing up the gap you cannot give her any space because she's going to make you pay and pam look all season long, it's like, who do we compare her to, right? Because we've never seen a women's basketball player like Caitlin Clark. And you know, it's Steph Curry on the men's side as Taylor gets, Taylor Theory gets two. But it, she scores like Diana Taurasi. But she has vision and delivery like Sue Bird. So it's like, if you combine those two together, that's like Caitlin Clark right now. Her pace coming off of the screen. She catches her feet or set. She gets it off quickly. Stalky foul theory. Seven of Ohio State's 11 points. Ohio State held to single digits in the first quarter for only a third time this year. 
As they trail 26 to nine. Stokey again, count it. The delivery, it's on the money. Everybody's worried about Caitlin Clark. You send multiple defenders to her. She has an eye on her teammates. You make one mistake, she makes you pay. Yeah, Mike's old Mr. or let her go just for a second. Excel now has two personal fouls. She's their leading scorer. And Kevin McGuff is keeping her out there. There she is, number 24, guarded by the other 24, Gabby Marshall. Defense! 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 Kevin McGuff said, hey, we have to get stops. And I know Iowa is shooting the leather off the basketball right now, but they have to get the stops to play at the pace they want. He said, we need fast break points. And defensively, we have to get help side if we're going to lob. And we also have to get ball pressure on the passer so that lob doesn't come in easily in the paint. And, and really, we've seen all season long, that's when Ohio State's at their best, when they can get out in transition, when they can the score at the rim. Now some concern, Sydney Falter felt very hard on her back. Foul on Ricky Harris. Shot goes up, you can see Ricky Harris backing up and that bend over is where she gets the call. My fans appreciating Stokey and a falter for their efforts. Clark, again, just needs maybe a foot. You, you cannot go under a screen on Caitlin Clark. You've got a chaser, force her into a curl, force her into multiple people. There are no shortcuts when it comes to defending her. Under one, under two, all day long she's gonna make that. Thanks, guys. And it has been the Caitlin Clark Show. Charlie Cream thinking maybe Iowa. He's got Iowa right now as a number two seed. But uh, this is eye candy right now, what we're seeing. It, it sure is. And if they can continue to keep their foot on the gas and spread this margin out, I, I certainly think they have to be in consideration to move up that line. Lord Steph White and Chrissy Winter Scott joining you from not Carker, uh, Carver Hawkeye Arena. But it sure looks like it. It looks like it, it feels like it, it sounds like it. About 290 miles north of Carver Hawkeye here at Target Center. It's about a four and a half hour drive and so many people have made the drive. And so far they're loving what they're seeing in this Big Ten Championship. As you can hear after Monica Sedano knocked that shot in, all the Iowa fans are packed thick in here. Matter of fact, Lisa Bluter, the head coach for Iowa, she said, it's like Carver North in this building in Minneapolis, and it most certainly has been like that for the Iowa Hawkeye team. And she said, we just respect them for committing themselves to supporting our team. Been great fans all season, Steph, right? Over 8,000 season tickets sold down there. I mean, it's a fun team to watch. You know, certainly there's a limited opportunity to watch uh, potentially one of the best players to ever play the game as Monica Sonano gets another two. You know, Caitlin Clark's not going to don a Hawkeye jersey forever, so you want to take advantage of the opportunity to, to, to watch her. This is a community in Iowa City that has supported its women's basketball programs since C. Vivian Stringer was there. They love their basketball. Looking at man how to make on the last trip down, that one rimmed out, and now a foul on Warner. 
Murdoch, but Sonano, they're continuing to get her the ball inside too. Well, they're doing a really good job of, of lobbing over the top of defenders. This was just a mismatch, a miscommunication defensively. Taylor Mikesell caught on Monica Sonano, and this is the difference in a really smart, good, offensive executing team. Recognize the mismatch, deliver it in a timely manner. And that was one of the things that Lisa Bluter wanted to perfect today was getting that lob in. Conversely, Kevin McGuff talked about stopping it, and Iowa has been executing it, but it helps when Caitlin Clark is doing the passing and the shooting. Sonano with the rebound, a falter back in the game. Dribbles out of trouble and then got fouled by Theory. Yeah, not a smart foul by Taylor Theory. You can't afford to pick up a second foul. She's one of the best defenders on this team. Got to be a little bit more disciplined in that moment. And theory on the all-defensive team for Kevin McGuff. Pulled off the upset of Indiana after being down by 24 yesterday. Very difficult task against an Iowa team that is, they're shooting less than 80% now, down to 79. <laughs> Another terrific pass. Clark to Sonano. And that wasn't an easy one to handle. Monica Sonano, great hands to be able to corral that ball and put it in. And most of the Hawkeye fans, which is by far most of the people in this building are on their feet now. Harris can't quiet them down. Ohio State just chucking long range shot after long range shot. Ball takes away the basket. Caitlin Clark disagreeing. Thought she had an assist. And just watch this pass. It comes so tough. It's what a tough catch by Sonano. But Caitlin Clark understanding where she has to deliver it, understanding what kind of a pass Monica Sonano can handle. Stolke comes in, giving Sonano another rest. Monica goes out with 12 points and five rebounds. The last time these two teams met, Clark and Sonano combined for 50. And right now they are at 29. Foul on Heaven Bristow, the senior from Brooklyn, New York, Providence transfer. Just checked in and now Caitlin back at the line. 38th year, Champaway continues on the networks of ESPN. Tomorrow it's the West, West Coast Conference semis. BYU and St. Mary's, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. And then San Francisco Gonzaga follows that on ESPN2. Both available on the ESPN app. Lots of tickets being punched on the women's side. South Carolina with the victory over Tennessee, who had an improbable comeback of their own against LSU yesterday. So many comebacks so far in these conference tournaments. State, another long range shot. They are one of 11 from three. This is some blood now on the lip of uh, Heaven Bristow. Ohio State's going to have to find a way to get something going to the rim. It's probably not going to happen on the first side of, of the floor. Got to get it moving back and forth. Cody McMahon, so good going downhill. Hadn't gotten a lot of touches where she comes off of those handoffs and is able to turn the corner. Bristow draws the foul on Stokey. The second on her. Best high school player in Iowa last year. Stayed home to play close to home. It looks like Allison O'Grady's coming in for Stokey, and indeed she is. Addison, sophomore from Colorado. And the luxury up 42 to 13, where Coach Bluter doesn't even have to think twice about it. You rest her, you get O'Grady in, who usually doesn't get a lot of minutes. If you're Lisa Bluter, you certainly have that luxury, but you have in the back of your mind how quickly things can change with this Ohio State Buckeyes team. We've seen throughout the course of the season, they're down by double digits and find ways to turn it around. But this is an experienced Iowa Hawkeye team, same starting group for the last three years. They understand these moments. And the travel on Davis, and you only have to you can have a very short memory on this. You only have to go back to yesterday, right. right? When they were down 24 to Indiana. Indiana, right? The regular season champs, the top seed. 
And a team that is number two in the country behind South Carolina. Carly Green has him as his second overall seed. Well, calls the offensive foul. Bristow called for that personal foul for Ohio State. Ohio State with six field goals in this game. O'Grady, who just came in, finishes. And we saw Iowa this morning in shooting around, really working on that press break, getting the ball to the middle of the floor, and then continuing to try to score in transition. They want to make the Buckeyes pay, and so far they've done that. Mark and Warnock are the only starters in for Iowa. There's a little friendly fire right there as Warnock ran into a falter. Well, just going to get a couple of bruises from this game. 44-15. Caitlin Clark not just scoring, she's assisting. One of the best in the country. Averages over eight assists a ball game. She just has such great instincts. Her timing is impeccable. She understands who to get the ball to, when to get it to him, how to get it to him. She just makes her teammates better. And she assists on over 46% of their made field goals, and you can certainly see why. Six assists for Clark so far. We remind you that she have, did have a triple-double in the regular season matchup against this team in January. Uh, watch for Caitlin Clark going long right here. Break the press, Clark, two on one, gives it to a falter. Ohio State thought that that was a clean block by Bristow. Well, instead, a, a foul has been called. Alicia Bridger, Julie Bermanhook, and Natasha Kenny are officials this afternoon in Minneapolis. Bristow has three fouls. So she will head out. Kova comes back in for the Bucks. Walter <laughs> gets them both. Clark doing damage against Ohio State. I mean, that's, look at those numbers. That's just incredible. Outscoring them, out assisting them, same number of field goals. Yeah, that, that's Ohio State's team numbers for today on the left, and that's Caitlin Clark all by herself there on the right. This is an Ohio State team that needs to be able to set their press and score in transition. In the half court right now, they're struggling shooting the basketball. They're taking quick shots, not really forcing this Iowa Hawkeye defense to, to work throughout a shot clock, not giving opportunities to break them down and get high percentage looks. Sheldon delivered on the line after being fouled by O'Grady. Sonano. Walter gets it to Clark. And room. Caitlin uh, Clark in that regular season game in Columbus. 28 points, 10 rebounds, and 15 assists. That's the other thing. She's a terrific rebounder. She's sixth in the Big Ten in rebounding. She's only got one today, but a lot of that is because I was not missing. Sheldon, high degree of difficulty, couldn't get that one to go. Clark streaks down the floor and draws another foul. Foul call number five, Emma Schumacher. Kevin McGough trying to figure something out in this game. And the shoemate called for that foul. The 
ESPN NBA Sunday night doubleheader starts with Jason Tatum and the Celts hosting the Knicks, who beat Boston back on Monday, begins at 7.30 Eastern. Then we've got Memphis and the Clippers. Hope it starts at 7 Eastern with the NBA. Countdown. Caitlin Clark gets a, a rest. Every minute of the regular season game is Columbus. Cody McMahon can do. And I think Cody McMahon's got to get some more touches. But watch at the end of this replay how the double comes over because what does Cody McMahon do best? The spin move. So watch Monica Sinano comes over. Cody McMahon has her eye on her, so she knows not to spin. She splits the defenders and she gets the opportunity for the and one. And the first Big Ten freshman of the year for Ohio State since Kelsey Mitchell in 2015. Second team all Big Ten performer this year, such a bright future. And now remember, Caitlin Clark's not on the floor. Both of those players in Taylor Theory and Taylor Mike still have two fouls. You've got to be more disciplined in this situation. When somebody has the ball, move your feet, keep active hands, but you don't have to go for steals. You want to steal out of these traps, not in these traps. Very chancy. Molly so Theory, such a valuable player on the all-defensive team, sits down with three fouls. Molly Davis at the free throw line. Had her first three years at Central Michigan. Caitlin Clark, by the way, already has 21 points. Her 29th game this year with the age 20. Mike Sell. First points in a long time. Out of three early in this game. And with that bucket, Ohio State finally is outscoring Clark. Who's going to come back in the next whistle? Just a little brush screen by Miku Lashakova getting Taylor Mikesell the little bit of time she needs to knock down the three. She's back in the game. Clark strikes me as a player who doesn't want to be on the bench. Yeah, I can imagine like she's over there antsy, you know, probably saying, hey, you ready for me to go back? You ready for me to go back? <laughs> From West Des Moines, Iowa. 22 yesterday in the entire game against Maryland. Already 21 and we're not even a break. came back this year, used her COVID year, her extra year of eligibility, wanted another opportunity to play with Clark. Unfinished business for this team that was bounced early in the NCAA tournament. Lost in the second round to Creighton on their home floor. And a, remember Simano got a good look mm -hmm. at the very end and probably 90 times out of 100 she would hit that shot that didn't go in and the Hawks were upset. So Sonano back again. Mike Sell. Player that can light it up when she gets going. Most threes in the Big Ten this year. Clark directing Sonano and then told her to go after the screen. And that's a smart play. She saw how tight Sonano's defender was playing her, told her to slip out of it, and it was able to deliver it. Sonano and Clark have combined for 36 points now. Another board for Sonano, who is working on a double-double. championship game. Clark cleans up her own miss. We still have two minutes to go in this half, and Ohio State's already given up the most points they have in any half of the season. Two on one. Marshall decides to put it up herself. Clark gets the rebound. And then another assist. Gets it to Kate Martin. 
That's just what makes it so tough, Pam. Wow. You gotta play her ability to score, but she's such a heady player, an unselfish player that finds her open teammates and she just can pick you apart. Caitlin's got eight assists to go with the 23 points. A minute to go in the first half. I mean, look at Caitlin Clark tells Monica Sinano to go to the rim. She sees how the defense is playing her. And then coming down and going at the rim in transition right there for the offensive rebound put back. Bit of an ambitious pass from Martin to try to lob it into Sinano, and they have a nice little giggle about it. Number 22, Eddie Walker, in for Ohio State. Because Sinano was fouled. Kowalczykowa's first. And Sonano back at the free throw line. Monica back in her home state. She's from Watertown, Minnesota. I'm looking forward to hearing from Charlie Cream at halftime. <laughs> yeah, me too. Does this move the needle for the Hawkeyes if they can sustain this or even expand on it? It's moved it for me. Margin of victory is certainly a key component, and there's Caitlin Clark finding Ken Martin in transition. It's almost like they're playing against air right now. Well, they're on a mission. Certainly disappointed they didn't compete for a regular season title in the Big Ten, an opportunity to get the tournament championship back-to-back -back years. Nope. Martin corrals it and now Clark. And her teammates can close out a remarkable first half. They need a shot. Clark couldn't get it off in time. Iowa scored 61 points. They shot 72% from the floor. Hit five threes. Caitlin's got 23 points and nine assists to go with five rebounds. The triple-double watch is on. Here's Christy Winter-Scott. Coach, this is the most points Iowa women's basketball has ever scored in a Big Ten game ever in a first half. What do you have to say about the efficiency that your team came out of the gates with today? I mean, when you shoot the ball at 72% and over 60% from three, good things are bound to happen. But quite honestly, I really like our defense, too. I think we're doing a great job of contesting their great shooters, handling their drives as best as we can. And defensively, what did you like most about what your effort looked like on that side because they can't get into their press because they haven't been able to score. Yeah, we, we talked a lot about if we get stops, we don't have to deal with the press, and we know their press is really good. I think we've handled the press, though, when we have had to seen it, but getting those stops, again, Gabby Marshall, Sydney, all four are really working her, their tails off. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Pam? Thank you very much. Yes, so Ohio State only shot 25% from the floor, Caitlin Clark, 23 points, nine assists. All-State Halftime Report, John Brickley, Monica McNutt, and Charlie You are watching ESPN's Champ Week, presented by Principal. Halftime of the Big Ten Championship between Iowa, the number two seed, and Ohio State, the number four seed. It has been all Iowa, they lead 61 to 24. Caitlin Clark alone has 23 points. It was an unbelievable display in the first half. Pam Ward along with Stephanie White. Christy Winter Scott is with us as well. Wow. Yeah, I mean, this was just a clinic by Iowa on both ends of the floor. And of course, it's spearheaded by Caitlin Clark. She was absolutely terrific in the first half. Nearly a double double 23 points, nine assists, five rebounds. So she is certainly on triple double watch but she just does it in so many ways she creates space for herself she gets to the rim she finds ways to get to the foul line she sees her open teammates and deliver passes on the money making everybody around her
better. I mean, man, this was truly textbook offensive execution by the Hawkeyes. And Lisa Bluter had something to say to her team at the half. All right, 1-0, but you guys, we're so close to that finish line. We are so close to that finish line, all right? We've dreamed about it. You know it's here. You've seen it. Let's go take it. You're worth it. Let's go take it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Iowa going for its second straight Big Ten championship, and she said it at the end of shoot around this morning. Don't be afraid of the space between your dream and reality, and the space between dream and reality right now is maybe a couple of millimeters with this huge lead. <laughs> now, Ohio State did come back yesterday against top seed Indiana down 24, making shots and putting the press on. But they didn't make a lot of shots in the first half, and Iowa even when uh, and Coach Bluger told that to Christy Winter Scott right before uh, they went to the locker room, that they did handle the press pretty well, but in that first half, Ohio State only shot 25%. Took a lot of long jump shots, quick in the shot clock, not a lot of ball reversals. I like the first play they came out with, getting Cody McMahon, getting downhill. I think Ohio State has to certainly do more of that. But the Buckeyes also have to be smart on defense. You can't take chances. They have a lot of players in foul trouble. Taylor Mikesell picked up her third. Taylor Theory has three. Heaven Bristow has three. Everyone else, two. So they've got to be a little smarter on the defensive end. Ohio State taking out top seed Indiana yesterday. Chance for a three-point play for Cody McMahon. So that seemed to be part of the message. Stop taking the jump shots and get, get it Cody. Inside. No question about it. No, Cody McMahon is so strong and does a good job of posting for position right here. Gets into her defender and Kate Martin and draws the contact. Cody McMahon, freshman of the year in the Big Ten, has such a wonderful future ahead of her. Now they can set up the press. Kate Martin easily. Catches the pass from Clark. And I like that adjustment by Iowa, having Caitlin Clark take the ball out of bounds. She uses the baseline, makes good decisions. Casey Sheldon getting the start here in the second half after coming off the bench to begin the game. Good pass inside. State drawing some fouls here. This is an Ohio State lineup that went small coming out of the halftime. Really five guards on the floor getting into the two man. Good patience by Taylor Theory waiting for Kate Martin to go by. Two quick fouls on Martin. She has three total now and sits down in favor of a falter. Theory does get the three point play. State down 24 to Indiana yesterday. Largest comeback in the history of the Big Ten tournament as they were able to come back and win that game. So the only team in D1 to do that from 20 down. But this is a much larger deficit. Good double on Sonano, who had her way inside in the first half. Jump ball. I caught up with Kevin Guff walking in from halftime, and he said, hey, we've got to go with a smaller lineup. We want to pick up the tempo. We want to attack the rim and get downhill. You saw Cody McMahon go right to work inside. They've scored all of their points so far in the second half of the paint. We saw in the first half, Novak able somehow to regather and score right before the shot clock went off. That's McKenna's first points of the game. Which is in double figures. And now, Ohio State throws it away. Warnock does have another year of eligibility left, but she's not coming back. She's going to go to dental go to school. Dental school, yes. Kate Martin and Gabby Marshall are both set for, are going to come back for that fifth year. This match inside. See if they can take advantage of it. You saw that yeah. all the way, right? I mean, and, and Ricky Harris doing the best job she can to stay active, but <laughs> still can't, can't foul down there. Harris at 5'10", Sonano at 6'3", and just a master of the low block. And Ricky Harris has now joined the three-foul club on Ohio State today. 
<laughs> it is a club, isn't it? And not one you want to be in. Harris, Theory, and Mike Sell all with three for the Bucks. Warnock. Will Short. McMahon. Harris. Warnock messed that up. But can't quite throw it in from there. Luter talked to us at shoot around today about different ways to get Monica Sinano the ball. She's continuing to try to post for the lob, and there she just uses that forearm to push down on Cody McMahon. But there are opportunities when somebody is fronting you to skip and seal, to get the high-low. You don't have to necessarily always settle for the lob on one side of the floor. The other thing, they can put her in the two-man. Cody McMahon is a perimeter defender. She's not used to playing in the two-man game as a post defender. So how does Ohio State, how would they handle that if you put Clark and Sonano in the two-man. And that was one of the concerns for Kevin McGuff was the post defense. Mike Sell can heat it up. Gets down, gets that three down. And by the way, that last foul was not on Caitlin Clark, but was on Sonano. She sits down with two fouls. And Anna Stokey, who had four points in the first half, comes in for her. Clark kept her dribble alive, Sheldon. Bowder. Well, good skip right here by J.C. Sheldon, finally Taylor Mikesell. She didn't need a lot of time or space either. It's all a terrific three-point shooter. Over 2,000 career points, top 10 in threes at Ohio State, even though she's only been there a couple of years. Clark with the one-handed scoop rolls off the rim. Harris. Warnock has been terrific on the boards. Iowa plus 12 with rebounding in this game, and Caitlin Clark knocks down yet another three. You cannot be sitting inside the three-point line when Caitlin Clark is bringing the ball down the floor. Every highlight you see across the country is the logo three. You got to get up there and put some pressure on her. Stokey, no call after she got bumped by McMahon. And the logo here at the Big Ten Championship at the Target Center is not that big. So if you're hitting near the logo here, that's a really long shot. Well, Kevin McGuff talked to us about it before the game. He said, we can't be sitting inside the three-point line waiting on Caitlin Clark to come to us. She's not going to. Every scouting report talks about picking up Caitlin Clark before she crosses half court. And the Buckeyes, everybody inside the three-point line. Taylor Theory, fortunate she didn't get called for a foul right there. But Caitlin Clark says, are you going to guard me? <laughs> and if not? I'm going to put it through the bottom of the net. The range is just unbelievable. It's like maybe they need a four-point line for her. That one off the mark. And she was looking at each other, and it stays with Iowa. Caitlin Clark takes those logo threes, and Lisa Bluter was joking at shoot around today, saying, hey, if we have this crazy shot going up, and Clark was like, I don't know who would do that. But I think there's a lot of trust between Clark and Bluter in terms of the choices that she makes when she takes those shots. It's high risk, high reward with everything Caitlin Clark does, but there's been a lot of reward this year for the super junior. Yeah, there really has. And you know, Lisa Bluter doesn't like a lot of the, the quick e shots, but you can certainly tell when Caitlin Clark has a heat check kind of moment. Warnock picked up her second foul on the last trip, and Coach Bluter has also told us that she can tell that when there are times when she knows that Caitlin has that look in her eye, and she knows that she's going to go ahead and shoot it. And there are some of those that you just have to live with with your Lisa Bluter, but you can also talk to Caitlin Clark about certain timing of those situations as Sydney the Falter continues to give this team a lift. 
Caitlin Clark's percentages are really good. 47% overall, 38% from three. A high volume shooter at times, but she's also a high volume maker of shots. And assister. And assisting, right. You know, certainly she's probably the most electric player in the game right now. You know, the way that she can score in bunches, the way that she finds her teammates. I mean, she's just a lot of fun to watch. You know, we certainly saw that in the first half, and she's going to get a little extended break. We're sitting on a, an official's timeout coming up, and Caitlin sits down. And then you look at her numbers, and nearly 27 points, over eight assists, over seven rebounds, you know, shooting at those high percentages that we talked about. I mean, she is certainly, to me, the front runner for player, national player of the year. I think she is, and you know, there's other great players out there, the reigning player of the year, and Aaliyah Boston. But I don't think there's any doubt that Caitlin's the most valuable player in the country. All that she does for this team. And the versatility that she brings. The consistency, the efficiency. Stalky, great hustle to keep it alive. A falter. Couldn't do much with it. So right now, just two starters on the floor for Coach Polluter. Iowa up 70 to 37 in the Big Ten Championship game. Caitlin Clark, you gotta guard her from the logo. Don't back up. Knocks it down. And, and guys, who does she remind us of? Because I can't think of a single women's basketball player that she reminds me of unless you combine multiple ones. The only one I can compare her to is Steph Curry and what she does in this game. I mean, the logo threes, the ability to come down in transition, to get to the rim, finish with contact, the flashy passes, playing in transition. I mean, all of these things. And, you know, I, I have racked my brain trying to think about a women's basketball player. And, and the only thing I could come up with was the combination of Tarasi and Sue Bird. But she is much like Steph Curry. That was tonight's Worth a Watch brought to you by Principal. And yes, we all want to be like Caitlin. And certainly, Caitlin Clark Worth a Watch most days, certainly today, with those numbers. Luca Garza in the house, supporting the Hawks. And I'm impressed with what he's been seeing. Clark back in the game. Time out, got a couple of minutes rest. Mike Sell, see they can do this though, they can shoot their way back into a game. They have been down by as many as 37, now it's 28. Came back from 24 yesterday against Indiana, another turnover. Clark stuck her hand in, and Caitlin gets called for the foul. Her first. Cody McMahon in the first half with seven points. She's got nine here in the third quarter. Luca Garza, he is a member of the Minnesota Timberwolves in the NBA. They played at Sacramento last night. He just landed about an hour and a half ago and said, I had to rush over to the arena because I wanted to see my Hawkeyes play. And I asked him, what is it like to have it feel like Carver North here? And he said, it's amazing to see a player like Caitlin Clark, who has sustained her efficiency over the course of time has been amazing. He said he was in between yes! Megan Gustafson as player of the year on the women's team and Caitlin Clark. And he said he's taken so much from both of them in terms of their dogged work ethic. Luca Garza is one of those that has that dogged work ethic as well. I mean, he was a tremendous player at Iowa. He continues his career in the NBA. Well, certainly was a load on the interior for the Hawkeyes. Ricky Harris just picked up her fourth personal foul for Ohio State. Now on the bench, she has not scored in this game. 
And the 38th year Champ Week continues on the networks of ESPN coming up tomorrow. West Coast Conference semis, BYU St. Mary's on ESPN, then San Francisco Gonzaga on ESPN2, both available on the ESPN app. Mike Sell, just a little bit too strong. There's a rebound for Clark. Her first to the second half. Molly Davis with a great catch on the Clark pass. And now Clark officially has a double-double, her 10th assist to go along with 26 points. Theory patiently waited and then got fouled. I mean, this pass is delivered on the money. Molly Davis stretches out to get it, is able to corral it and finish. I mean, what a tough play by Molly Davis. Yeah. Caitlin Davis. Clark saying, get back into play. Yeah, we need go. John D. Yeah, Davis listed at 5'7", transfer from Central Michigan. So the all-MAC team there. Marshall! Her second three in as many attempts. So she's now made 26 of her last 43 from distance. Double watch is on for Caitlin Clark, but Gabby Marshall just as hot from outside. The Hawks are rolling. This is what you play for. This is what you dream on. Two words. March Madness. Countdown is on for the NCAA tournament. Or on the women's side, we've had some tickets punched already. Have one done here. Tennessee Tech is one of the Ohio Valley, Chattanooga, the SOCON, St. Louis in, South Carolina again in the SEC. Congratulations to Kenny Brooks and the Virginia Tech Hokies winning their first ACC championship. Yeah, what an outstanding job he's done all season long. He talked to us about Liz Kitley coming on campus and changing the culture of that program. Made it cool to be a Hokie, but Georgia Amore, terrific tournament, most outstanding player. 25 today for Georgia Amore. Right here, Iowa with this commanding lead. And in the tournament history, the Big Ten, the largest margin of victory in a championship game happened a couple of years ago when Maryland beat Iowa. And Iowa came back to beat Indiana in the championship game last year. And in this third quarter, Ohio State actually is outscoring the Hawkeyes, and they've done a lot of damage, a lot of three-point play opportunities. Well, they've done a really good job of starting to attack the rim. In the first half, they settled for a lot of long-range, quick shots, jumpers that were contested, and they have made it a pointed effort to get two feet in the paint and score at the rim. Taylor Fury in there. With three personal fouls, hits the three-point play, and Kevin McGuff Started the smaller lineup in the second half for that reason. Wanted to attack the rim more. So quickness in. Caitlin Clark picked up her second foul on that last play. Fourth time in the last five years that I was played in the championship game of the Big Ten. Trying to lob it in to Sonano, but McMahon was there. Marshall then kicked it away. Hell ball, possession arrow for oh, Ohio State. I love to see anybody get on the floor after a loose ball, but when you see a big <laughs> get on the floor after a loose ball, that makes every highlight tape. And that was Monica Sonano. Playing her last collegiate season. Time first team all Big Ten performer. 
Cleary looked inside. And they get it back to her. Like so, with the floater, draws a foul. I mean, both teams are just hacking each other. And, and, and not smart fouls. You know, play good defense, disciplined defense, contest shots, but fouling jump shooters, and fouling because you're late in rotation. And that's a third foul on Sonato, so Stolke comes in. Hannah's playing with two fouls herself. Sonano. Sitting down with 18 points, just one point here in the third quarter. Sunday we'll have the exclusive live announcement of the 68-team NCAA Women's Championship field, breaking down every team and every matchup in each region, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN and the app, and a bonus hour of coverage on ESPNU. That's a week from tonight. Second straight year, 68 teams have been in the field. First year that there will be only two regional sites. Seattle and Greenville. Kate Martin. Twelfth assist for Clark. Still three rebounds away from what would be her fourth triple-double of the year in her second against Ohio State. And a shoemate. With the bucket, then Caitlin Clark attacks the rim. Well, Caitlin Clark sees she has an advantage in transition. Nobody in front, nobody in the lane. Taylor Mikesell is late. And Caitlin Clark gets the finish. It's now the fourth on Mikesell. And that's one where you just, you let her go. You don't need to get that fourth foul right there. Well, she might have been by Shoemate before she even got into the lane, but Mike Sell so valuable, their best outside shooter, their leading scorer on the season. Mike Sell decides for the long range three. She's got eight points in this quarter. State with 30 points in the third. They only had 26 points in the entire first half. Or 24 points, excuse me, a season low. Also had 24 in the first half of lost to Maryland in College Park earlier this year. Martin hit one from there a moment ago. Now floats it up and in right before the buzzer went off. Kate Martin was calling for that ball the whole time Caitlin Clark was driving it. The pass looked like it was deflected, but Kate Martin able to pick it up and finish it with the floater. Last May basket is under review. Fourth quarter about to get underway. Iowa leading Ohio State 83-54 in the Big Ten Championship game. Caitlin Clark showing out on another triple-double watch. Elizabeth Kitley, two-time ACC Player of the Year, at 20 points. Leah Boston in their win against Tennessee to win the SEC, 18-7. And, and Caitlin, 28 points, 13 assists, and seven rebounds. Cam Ward, Stephanie White. Joining you, Christy Winter Scott. outscored by eight points in that third quarter. Trying to nail down their second straight Big Ten Championship. Clark, a little bit short. Theory. And now here's Clark, three on two. Pulls it out. Settles things down for Iowa, trying to beat 
Ohio State for the second time this year. Sheldon, he's a really good defensive player, got it away from Clark and fumbled it out of bounds. see Sheldon, such a dynamic player, but slowed down by a low, lower leg injury this year. Honorable mention, All-American last year. I don't know how Lisa Bluter still has a voice. No. We can hear her from over here. <laughs> we can, yes and we can. It's raspy, <laughs> but it's projecting. <laughs> Abby Marshall, who has been on fire from three-point range the last 10 games, has hit 60% of them. Peyton Clark does it again. Gets it into Sonano. In perfect harmony. Shoemate has given Kevin McGuff a nice punch off the bench here in the second half. Two rebounds away from a triple-double. Warnock tied up by McMahon. Caitlin Clark just does such a good job. She gets the ball, she sees Monica Sinano. She looks like she's gonna throw the skip pass, so that keeps Taylor Theory occupied on the backside outside the paint because she just looks across the floor and as soon as she sees Theory bite on that, she delivers that pass to Monica Sinano. Excel playing with the foul trouble. Clark with the kick. Excel and Harris each with four personals for Ohio State. Marshall, good job to have the baseline cover. Look, yesterday Cody McMahon fronted Mackenzie Holmes inside, and she was able to use her elevation to get over the top. But what Monica Sinano does so well is she holds that seal until the ball's over her head, so when she releases, she can go get it. So it doesn't leave Cody McMahon any time to get up and get the ball. I mean, McMahon is sitting on her, and Monica Sinano right here, she doesn't go for it until it gets above her head, so the timing is perfect. And Caitlin Clark puts just enough lift and leads her just enough to the rim that allows it to be delivered. Yeah, it's really uncanny how perfect those passes always seem to be. Sonano gets one from Martin this time. Caitlin Clark now with 15 assists. That is three off her career high that she set at Penn State last year. Excel lighten it up. Timeout, Ohio, State. Ohio State takes a timeout. Down 29 in the championship game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. When you take care of your team, they take care of business. Speaking of taking care of business, Iowa did just that when they beat Indiana last year to win this Big Ten Tournament Championship. And they're less than seven minutes away from repeating. Caitlin Clark has put a hurtin' on Ohio State, both in the regular season, the only matchup in the regular season, and today. Had a triple-double, first time out, has already matched the 15 assists and 28 points, and two rebounds away from a triple-double today. Monica Sonano, not so bad. Monica scores. Monica Sonano in two games is shooting 88% from the floor against the Bucks. 
She just gets such good position. And of course, when you have Caitlin Clark, who can deliver the pass to you right where you can just go straight into your shot, it makes a difference. Clark able to tight rope it by the sideline to keep it in. Looking for Sonato. Automatic. Well, there's nothing that Cody McMahon can do if she gets behind Monica Sonano. I mean, it's tough enough when you're in front. You're depending upon your help behind you, but when you get buried, this is an Ohio State team in the second half that's playing five perimeter players. And Caitlin Clark sees it. She knows Monica Sonano's cutting across the lane. She waits till she gets in position, and she delivers the pass, and Sonano goes to work. Well, Caitlin Clark and her family, they are very, very close. Her dad, Brett, and her mom, and they've been here for the week-long tournament. Also, her brother, Blake, and Colin. Now, Blake and her dad, Brent, they are here. But Ann had to go back with her younger son, Colin, who is a senior in high school. He has his basketball banquet today, so they've had to divide and conquer. But Caitlin has played so much pickup ball with her brothers and their friends. That's how she became so ruggedly fierce on the court as a competitor. Ruggedly fierce really nails it with uh, Caitlin Clark, who's now just one rebound away from her fourth triple double of the season. And Caitlin Clark certainly has uh, a, the, the dog in her. The, 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 the supreme compliment that you like to talk about. Mm -hmm. Every team needs one, but she's kind of got some kind of that Tarasi. She's got the swag. She's got the extra stuff going on that can, I would think, would irritate the heck out of teammates. Or, or, or opponents. Opponents, yeah. Teammates love it. Yeah, teammates okay. love it. You always get to take ahead of opponents. No doubt about it. But you know what? To be a great player, you've got to have that dog. And, and you've got to have that fire. And you've got to have that competitiveness. And certainly, I think that Caitlin Clark's persona, um, as well as her game, has been good for the game of basketball. There are a lot of eyeballs that are, that are on it that want to see what she can do. And you look in this arena, and it's full of black and gold. And, and there's no doubt that the Hawks love this team and they love Caitlin Clark. And the hustle continues. That is her 10th rebound. Another triple double for Caitlin Clark. And then she faked that she was going to throw up the shot. Stolke, who is in for Sonano, who is now sitting down with four fouls. The recipient of that pass. Man, frustrated that a foul wasn't called, has just been assessed a technical foul. away and put the two hands up like I didn't do anything so let's take a look at what happened well you mentioned it Cody man frustrated she didn't get the foul call just extends that arm and pushes off offensive rebound put back and she was fouled but didn't get the foul call. <laughs> and Cody McMahon is strong now. Oh, yeah. And again, just a first. Score the basket. We have an intentional foul on and red 32. Ball. We'll shoot two shots in the ball and make it. I certainly understand McMahon's frustration. This team has trailed big since the beginning of this game. She is a wonderful player as a freshman. Well, and look, there, there's a, a lot of basketball left to play for Ohio State. They're going to have an opportunity. <laughs> uh huh. Another 30 point triple double for Caitlin. But Ohio State's going to have an opportunity to get some time here. 
get healthy as Gabby Marshall continues her hot streak. And they've hit 100, the century mark. A falter pursued by McMahon who fouled her. Baseline drive, baseline drift, Gabby Marshall knocks down the three, and this place erupts. Caitlin Clark goes out with another incredible line. Second triple double of the season against Ohio State. Her fourth of the season, her tenth of her career. And when, before she left, she was kind of doing a you know a walking victory lap, if you will, and looking at the crowd and yelling, let's go, and firing them up. shooting 66% for the game. They led 26 to nine after one quarter, 61-24 at the half. One up, missed everything. McMahon. Really had a good second half for Ohio State on the offensive end. Team second. 22, and now Gabby Marshall goes out. Three for three from three point range in her last 10 games, over 60% beyond the arc. Her first 22, 24%. And Pam, we've seen a lot of this Iowa team, and they, they have their ups and downs, but this is a team that looks like a Final Four caliber. Golf club, this certainly counts as an up. Charlie Cream has them as a two seed. He had Ohio State as a three. And when you look at this performance, granted they're not playing Indiana. The top seed was beaten by Ohio State yesterday after coming back from 24 down. Mike Sell is a three-point machine herself, but gosh, you look at them. When they're playing like this, they're a Final Four team. No doubt. They're a top seed. And, and look, the Big Ten has been the toughest, deepest conference in the country this year. And they lost on the road at Illinois to a really good Illinois team. Sean Green's done an outstanding job. You lose at Indiana, you lose at Maryland, but you beat Indiana at home, you beat Maryland at home, you, you beat Ohio State. I mean, this is a team that is putting it together and playing their best basketball at the right time. And they beat Maryland again here. Yes. <laughs> and Stokey, the Cedar Rapids kid, good minutes off the bench. Smiles all the way around, and Lisa Bluter. Um, and this, this team has been together. This is an anomaly. This is a throwback team. Players that have played together. Monica Sonano coming back for her extra year. You already mentioned that Martin and Marshall are going to come back. They only have Molly Davis as a transfer, Kylie Fuerbach as a, a hurt transfer. But the, and, and this shows you, right, the, the strength of chemistry and being together. And the same starters for three years. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And you and you look at this this crowd. This crowd is invested in this program because they're invested in these young women because they get to know them. They watch them, they follow them, they're invested in them, and that's because this group has stuck together and have continued to do special things. This is a, an emphatic win. We still have two minutes to go in this game. Coach Bluter has emptied her bench. Tied up. 
For the 38th year, Champ Week continues on the networks of ESPN tomorrow. West Coast Conference semifinals, BYU St. Mary's, 9 Eastern on ESPN. Then on ESPN2 with San Francisco and Gonzaga. Both games the ESPN app. Cave with the miss, rebound taken down. AJ, AJ Edgar, collision in the paint. So this is a new record for points in a Big Ten title game. The old one, 104 by Maryland, and the aforementioned Maryland win a couple of years ago here, which also happened to be the largest margin of victory. So they're they're crushing both that. Well, this is an inspired team. Inspired effort, certainly. Now, Lisa Bluter talks about how much she loves this team, how proud she is, that certainly the big two get a lot of attention, but everybody else plays their role, understands their role, and excels in their role. Sharon Goodman now checks in, a junior from Lime Springs, Iowa. Missed all of last year with an ACL, so everybody getting in and out of this Big Ten championship game where Iowa's setting several records. And most importantly for them, they're going to win their second championship. All smiles for Caitlin Clark with another triple-double. And they will host in the first and second round in Iowa City. Carver Hawkeye Arena North is like this. Can you imagine what Carver Hawkeye Arena for real is going to be like during that tournament? It's going to be rocking, Pam. It's going to be so much fun. I mean, look at this place. Matt Wilson, our director, Seth Miller, our producer, with all these great shots and contests. I mean, that just shows you. There's just this little flicker, flicker of red across the way from us. For the Ohio State fans, everything else is black and gold. And they have been loud all weekend. Fall to 25 and 7 on the season. And Charlie Cream has them projected as a three seed. Kaya Henderson in the game, the freshman from Utica, New York, with the bucket. But the day, the weekend, and the Big Ten belong to the Iowa Hawkeyes. Caitlin Clark, 30 points, 17 assists, and 10 rebounds. What an effort by this team. From the start of the game, they put, came out, had their foot on the gas, and did not let up. 62% for the game. And now the Iowa fans celebrate along with their team. For the second straight year, the Iowa Hawkeyes win the Big Ten Championship. And they do it in record fashion. Most points, largest margin of victory. And Caitlin hangs another triple-double. Well, you could tell that Caitlin Clark came out of the gate, locked in, laser focused. Heck, Pam, she was hitting logo threes at shoot around this morning. The Hawkeyes were ready to go, ready to win another Big Ten championship. See, nice exchange between her and Cody McMahon in the handshake line. Now she's gonna be Caitlin Clark with her people. So 
the dream became a reality for Lisa Bluter and her Hawkeyes in convincing fashion. NCAA committee, do you make them a number one? They certainly look like one today. They absolutely did. They came out and they owned this game from start to finish. Margin of victory is an important piece. Coach's family out there. So Caitlin Clark, not a bad day. Here she is with Christy Winter Scott. Caitlin, Lisa Bluter said, don't let the space between your reality and your dreams be something that you're fearful of. She said to claim it today at shooting practice. What did that mean for you to hear that and how did you do that? I think, you know, starting right from the jump, that's exactly what we did. You know, we wanted to come out and set the tone right away, you know, not let them their press phase us. And for us, I think it started on the defensive end. Um, you know, when they don't make shots, they struggle to get in their press um, and that's where they, where they thrive. So, you know, I'm proud of us. You know, this team has kept, kept believing, kept believing. Um, maybe we didn't win the Big Ten regular season, but we knew we could win it here. Um, and this is what matters, and I'm glad we're playing our best basketball right now. And they, you're playing your best basketball because of you, your 10th career triple-double, your fourth this season, and your second against Ohio State. What does it take for you to sustain that level of excellence in every aspect of the game? Yeah, you know, I think I, I want to be able to do a lot of different things for my team, and, you know, when we shoot the ball like that, it's pretty easy for me to get assists. So a lot of credit goes to my teammates. You know, you can't front Mon in the post. She's just too good, and, you know, she connected on a lot of tough passes and finished some tough layups around the rim. When Gabby shoots the ball like that and Kate plays like that, and, I thought Cindy at Balter gave us great bench production as well. So uh, it was really a team win, and that's what it's been here in Minneapolis the whole week. Back-to-back -back championships for you now. Strong momentum moving forward. How does this carry you into the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I think to continue to ride it. You know, we know we can't get too high, but taking this momentum forward is really all you can do. But I'm proud of this group, and we really deserve it. That's the round. We got another triple-double. Caitlin, thank you, man. Wow, another incredible performance, particularly in the first half by this Iowa Hawkeye team. Back-to-back -back Big Ten Tournament champions. For Stephanie White, Christy Winter Scott, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Pam Ward as we say so long from the Target Center in Minneapolis. NBA Countdown presented by DraftKings Sportsbook.